My name is Alex de Blasio, and you've called me here today to talk about origami, amongst other things that I may or may not know about the Japanese culture. I had a free elective spot in my schedule last year, so I'm like, all right, I took four years of Italian, don't know a single word in high school, so let me try a much easier language in Japanese, and let me take a course on that, and so that's what I did, and it's actually really interesting. Now, the class was good, actually. I got an A, which was nice. But like every other uh, English course, it's just like the basics for the first uh, for the first class. But I mean, you get your bearings. Um, just bit, like greetings, like hello, how are you? Like uh, what time is it? What day of the week is it? You know, my name is this. I do that. Just simple, simple sentence structures, numbers, all the all the usual suspects. Yes, I brought my papers. If you. If you need the papers. Um, now, were you into origami before the class or after the class? I was into origami a long time ago. Um, just out of sheer and utter boredom. I was just, it was just, I don't know when it was. It might have been like sophomore year of high school or something. Some dumb time in life. And I was just bored one day. And I was like, let me see what I can do on YouTube. And I saw like origami. like, all right. I got paper lying around, let me give this a shot. Most of them, nine times out of 10, I would say yes. Standard origami things you see come from squares. Squares, but there are some exceptions. Like you can use like a loose leaf piece of paper for some things, but yeah. Definitely a swan. The simple swan, it's the easiest, it's the most um, identifiable to the naked eye, and it's the quickest. A lot of these things take, I, I, a lot of them take a decent amount of time to actually try to do. And the swan, it's only a few folds, but I have them memorized by now. But like a lot of these take, can, can take a while. It was like 20 steps in some of them. It's hard to, hard to get a grip. I was actually going to take Japanese too this year, but um, I added a second minor because I figured that'd be more beneficial to my future. But I think when all is said and done, when I finish with the major and the two minors, I think I'll have one more free elective. So it's either Japanese two or dinosaurs. What, what, do you, what do you want me to say? I just know, I, it was last year, it was a full year ago, second semester of last year. Alright, um, I don't know, just like a basic greeting or something. So basic, other than like, you know, everyone knows like, konnichiwa is like, you know, hello, sayonara is bye, but like, if I were to say like, hajimin mashite, watashi wa, Alex des, which is, you know, Alex obviously my name, watashi wa is I, and the verb am or is, desu, actually goes at the end. Interesting. Yeah. So go over that again, like... Hajime mashite is just like, you know, uh, regular green, just like, hello, how are you type of thing. Watashi wa literally means I, and then Alex is my name. And then desu is a verb, which means is or am. It's interchangeable just depending on the context, so... I don't know. I've just, I've always kind of liked just like, whenever I see pictures of like Tokyo, or just like the food's really good. They just, I'm pretty sure the, the economy's doing okay. They just seem to have things together over there. And I just, I felt like I needed to know why. Well, I mean, I love sushi and calamari. Those are the two big ones, I think, for anybody. Um, I obviously haven't had anything like that extreme considering you know, it's far away. I do, my uncle actually goes there quite a bit for his job. He has to fly to Japan for like meetings and he raves about it and he's taking a Japanese course actually right now because he's been there like six times, so doesn't know any words. It's definitely different than the other languages, like all the romance languages kind of follow the same trend. Like I know um, Italian and Spanish are pretty similar in most aspects, but Japanese has, it has layers. There's like, you know, the English and like every other language, there's what we have one phonetic set of like letters in our alphabet, A to Z. Japanese has three sets for different types of situations and different types of words. There's three sets of characters that all make the same sound. So verbally, it, it all sounds the same, but if you were to write it, it you, could, you have three different sets of characters that make, and they're also interchangeable. So that's really where it gets complicated. But we didn't do that in Japanese one. We just talked about the standard um, hiragana, which is like the basic Japanese. The book I have comes with quite a few. It comes with like the crane and like, um, you know, people have those little like paper balloons. The balloon's not that tough to do, but I just don't like it, so I don't do it. You can make like um, like a box, a peacock. The peacock's kind of tough. Um, you can make a kimono. There's um, 
I think it only has about six in here, but it comes with 50 pieces of paper, so there's a lot of trial and error. Because like, you fold a piece of paper the wrong way, it ruins it. You have to, it's very, you have to be very uh, precise, precise with it. But for the most part, um, I don't have the other ones memorized. I can't do it. There's just too much involved. When I first got this book, I tried to cruise through every single thing in this, and I failed every single one and wasted so much paper. Yeah, no, I hate it. I hate losing to paper. Because it, it tells you, it literally, it, the diagrams are, ugh, they're annoying. They can just be tough sometimes, just like where to fold what, and it's like you do it, and of course it's not this, and it's that, and it's just like a lot of it can get backwards with the arrows and the way it's going. YouTube, I think, is better for, um, did you actually see how they do it, rather than like interpret instructions that you may not understand, but either way, it's a good time. Honestly, it's it's peaceful. It's because you get to make something out of nothing. It's like you get this pretty little design <laughs> and a variety of shapes, not shapes, they're all squares, a variety of colors. And you just take your time, just you know, you're in your you're doing your thing and just you're you're only focused on folding a piece of paper, which sounds ridiculous, but it's actually pretty calming when it's done. You can put it down and say, I did that. When I first started, I did it a lot. That's how I memorized um, a couple things, just because they were the easiest and I could like do them at school. Um, nowadays, when I'm getting busy, not a ton, but I I still try to get back to it like once a week and just try to see like you know freshen up on a couple of folds here and there. I actually got this in Tokyo, Japan, Epcot, and I don't know what it says. It's either it says Warrior, Victory, Victorious Warrior. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I genuinely have no idea what this says, but I was in Disney World, so I splurged. It's just, well, because our, you know, our teacher was, was Japanese, obviously, the professor. So having, she actually talked about, like, the culture a lot, and, like, they're just such a polite people. Like, someone sneezed in class, you know, so naturally everyone's like, oh, bless you. She goes, No. Don't say bless you, because a sneeze is like a private thing. Like it's your own, it's your own thing to worry about. It's like, it's just like everyone does their own thing. It's very polite. Everyone asks questions. Like, you, know, you you bow, you shake hands. It's just a very, they're nice people, and I just think that's something we can all take away from.